Speak up, everybody. It's your girl, Sophia, a.k.a. Sophie, back again on Sophia's Football Talk to discuss something that is not men's club football related, nor even women's football club related. We're going to be talking about Norway's upcoming game against Cyprus in the Euro 2024 qualifiers. I believe this... Like, we're slowly getting to the end of the qualifiers. I think there's going to be one more international break in November. So it's been a lot, by the way. But this is the first of, of this international breaks game. And then, of course, we will be having um, a game against Spain this Sunday. But for this video, we're focusing on the away game, by the way, as the Norwegian lads are now in Cyprus getting ready for tomorrow's late kickoff um, against Cyprus. And uh, I don't know, the, you know, just some of the chances for Norway to qualify via this Euro 2024 qualification is very slim. Right now we do have, obviously, um, still Scotland at the top of the group uh, with 15 out of the 15 points they've gathered all of them and then of course you also have spain second but thing is though with spain they still have a couple of games less played than for instance norway and some of the others you also have georgia as well uh within there and um in the norway and then cyprus we'll talk about it um for me it's more about like okay even though we probably I don't know. Norway will probably disappoint me. I'm definitely more so excited to see some of the youngsters to get uh, a chance. Some of the, you know, exciting prospect, exciting young talent out there. Um, we already know in the other international break, last international break we had in September, we have this guy, Antonio Nusa, who plays for Club Bruges, who did finally get his debut scored on his debut and also i believe assisted in the other game following game which was against uh, uh georgia or georgia and he's been you know ripping it up in the within his own club club rouge but also for norway's team so far um another one who i really want to hopefully be able to to see get his debut at least would be this guy right here Oscar Bob, who obviously plays for Man City, gotten a few minutes for Man City this season. And from what I've gathered from Man City um, supporters, also just people in general, fans of the football, they've been, you know, definitely quite, um, I wouldn't say gassing, but, but speaking about Oscar Bob in a very um, lovely way, you know? And we'll definitely, of course, dive into what he can add to this team and whether or not he might get a chance. We'll have to wait and see, of course, the star. I mean, you have Martin Ødegård, who's the captain. Alain Braut Holland, you know, the star city player, hasn't really had the grounds running so far this season. Even though he is a top goal scorer in the Prem, if, if, you, if we kind of compare it to how he started off maybe last season, Obviously, we know he just whew, ripped it up, broke records, won a treble. Like, of course, it'll definitely be difficult to try to up that or maybe even come close. But um, there's definitely people calling for him to be like, yeah, is he having a howler now? I don't know. Hopefully, he can. For me, I don't give a damn what he does for Man City. I just want him, want him to show up for Norway. That's it. That's it. But yeah, uh, before we fully dive in, make sure you guys, of course, give this video here a big thumbs up because the more likes we get, the more we're able to push the likes out there for more people to see, all right? And also do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Um, we are on the road to 3K subscribers and feel free to join the SFT membership. Link is in the description box. It's just another way to support the channel. We got the Paul. Hope you're doing well. Says I've liked and shared the stream. Thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. all of it. Is uh, or does what, what should I say? Help the channel out 
massively. So yeah, obviously for the upcoming game tomorrow, I will be doing a match reaction for the game. So definitely stay tuned for that. Hopefully it can be a game where we, you know, we can cook. That would be great. Last game, I, I was like, ooh. Technically, though, Georg was really about in the, you know, they they did it. It was 2 1 at the end. They could have maybe even equalized. So we kind of messed up at the end there. Luckily, we're just about to get all those three points. Hopefully, we can get the job done tomorrow. Um, the big one, obviously, is against Spain for sure. But this this is a game that you, you must you must win if you still want to be able to be in um, contention to be able to, of course, qualify. Because there's only going to be two teams from each group, two nations from each group qualifying. So far, we can already say it. Scotland. Hey. They've, they've killed it with Scott McTominay being, I think, joint top goal scorer in the Euro uh, qualifiers alongside uh, Romelu Lukaku. And I think potentially also with Rasmus Heilun, if I'm not mistaken. I'm pretty sure that's the case. So all of them have been, you know, killing it uh, when it comes to, you know, scoring for their nations, um, for sure. How the, or how a the lads? From Georgie. Hopefully, hopefully you are doing well, Jordy. Big up to you. Big up to you. Um, but yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, gotta wrap the uh, the same set. Do, do, do. Now I was kind of about to sing the yeah, completely different team somber. Either way, big up though, big up though. So uh let's maybe talk about who are actually selected for this team let's do that you know who's been called up for these two upcoming qualifying games for norway okay so i just need to do um need to do this one and there we go so we have matthias dingelam one of the goalkeepers um who plays for bram which is a team here in Norway. And we have Örjan Nyland. That guy is basically, let's be honest, he, he's, he's been the, you know, the, the number one goalkeeper for Norway, who now plays for Sevilla. And I think he's had a few games actually for Sevilla. I'm, I did watch um, Sevilla versus Barcelona, or was it Barcelona versus Sevilla? One of the two matchups between those two where he did play in the game, but obviously they kind of did lose, unfortunately. But you know, he's he hides, you know, he's he's been there, played 48 games so far for Norway, so that, that's a lot of games. You also have Egil Selvik, who plays for Haugesund, which is a club in Norway. And then when it comes to the defenders, we have Christopher Ayer, who plays for Brentford. To any of you who watch um, Man United's game against Brentford, you probably might have seen a tall blonde dude at the back, okay? I believe he's the left back at the back who ended up with like celebrating uh, Brentford, you know, of course, leading and, you know, um, we're very close for Brentford to to win that game, to leave Old Trafford with Sutton. They weren't. He celebrated way too early. And then Scotty T came in, Scotty McSauce came in, Scotty came in and grabbed them three points like that. But that's Christopher Ayu. Brentford defender. We also have Frederick Björkan, who I believe sadly had to withdraw, you know, his position as I think he might have, I think he might be ill potentially. So I don't know exactly who's going to be his uh, replacement. That's that. We also have, um, by the way, Frederick Björkan does play for Bode Glimt, who is a club in, uh, in not Oslo, in Bode in Norway which I think a lot of you guys might have heard uh, the club Budeglimp before, who slapped up Roma 6, when I think it might have been last year in a um, Euro Conference League group game. Yeah, madness, madness. Also, Billy Gilmeling, who plays for S um, Copenhagen. Uh, Stian Gregersen plays for 
Porto. And then we have Marcus Holmgren Pedersen, who plays for Sassuolo. Definitely an interesting young talent there. Uh, Julian Rienschon, defender, fullback, plays for Dortmund. You also have Ken uh, Remy Stefan Stramberg, who plays for Wolringa, is a local club here in Oslo. You have Leo Skiri Östergård, who plays for Napoli, a center back. Frederik Ausdes, one of the wingers, plays for Benfica, does very well. Patrick Berg plays for Bode Glimt. Sander Berge, some of you guys might be familiar, used to play for, pretty sure it was Sheffield United before, now plays for Burnley, the midfielder. We also have now newcomer who maybe just hopefully will be able to get his um, debut, which will be Oscar Bob. Okay, Man City uh, midfielder. This, I heard about this kid back in 2016 when he was 13 years old. I don't know if anybody, any one of you guys have heard about, uh, I believe it's the biggest youth football cup tournament in the world which is norway cup it's actually um hosted here every year during the summer i believe first week of august so it's one week and you have nations from all over the world teams i think the youth might be potentially from like 12 to 19 years old or something in that order i never participated myself but both uh, boys and girls do participate and oscar bob was one of the uh, youth players. And I think there's also been a lot of other, like a lot of the, some of the like famous footballers throughout the years has actually, when they were younger themselves, actually played at Norway Cup, which is here in Oslo. Um, so that's pretty cool. So yeah. Um, and now he plays for City and getting a few minutes here and there. Hopefully he can end up getting or solidifying more of a um, permanent spot maybe or maybe being one of the like the ones to be called more upon uh, by pep sometime this season that would be great but so far from what i've seen uh within city i i, I like it and what i've heard as well like they, this is definitely a a uh, talent for the future for sure who, who can become a big baller the same also with uh, Antonio Nusa, who already had his debut in the last international break, as I mentioned. He could have played for Club Rouge. I believe there might have been some type of strain or some type of knock to his back, I think. Um, but I believe he might have played the last game for Club Rouge before the international break. He is now back. Um, he has joined the squad uh, for Norway, been in training, so... I would not be surprised if he starts. He did start in the last game, and he was arguably the best player for Norway in the game against Georgia. He was incredible, legit. We also have Usame Sharawi, who plays for Heden then. Big up to him of Morocco descent. You have Ula Solbakken, who plays for Olympiakos. I believe he plays for the Roma before, actually. I'm a bit unsure if the Olympiakos... Um, transfer is permanent or if it's alone but he used to play for Roma before actually also have Mart Martin Tushby plays for Genoa Christian Tushved who plays for Sassuolo uh, Hugo Vettlesen who plays for Club Rouge uh, Martin Ödegård of course our captain plays for Arsenal y'all know that Bord Finner plays for Bram Holland of course Alain Braut Holland City Alexander Sörlott Villarreal will be doing very well for Villarreal, by the way. And Jürgen Strand, Larsen, Celta, Vigo. So we we actually do have, I'm noticing, we do have a lot of, you know, some, a lot of the people, the, the, the players here that has been called up actually do play overseas. Of course we have, I would say maybe most of them do play here, but a lot of them also do play. If I, if I just count one, two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty well, you know what there might actually be more more people playing overseas than there is playing domestically here in norway actually but regardless though it is a good bunch and a lot of you know great talents 
Um, both talents, of course, we have, you know, the big players that a lot of us already know about, uh, which is, like I said, Ali Brat Holland, Martin Ödegård, um, but there are also some other gems, some also quality players that are here. Uh, so on paper, like if you look at it, you'll be like, you know what? There's a quality if there if you do the research, you would maybe assume that a nation like Norway should be qualifying. But it's been difficult, people. We haven't, and I always keep saying the same thing. Give me one second. Let me do this real quick, and then we do that. So we get back to full screen. I always say this within every um, international break. Whenever I talk about Norway, I always say, you know what? This nation on the men's side, may I add, because the women, obviously, I mean, they at least qualify, you know? They haven't done so well when we get there the past few years, but at least they got a trophy or two. You know, they, they got some silverware, you know what I'm saying? The men, no. Okay, last time we qualified for a major tournament, those of you who aren't aware, was actually in the year 2000. You want to guess how old that was? I was five. So I was already here in the universe. I was already here in the world, but I was five. Okay, literally a lot of, you know, if you look at some of the players that are here, a lot of them were like really young themselves. Some of them weren't actually even born the last time Norway qualified for um, a major tournament, whether it be a Euro Cup or whether it be a World Cup. It's been years, okay? And they used to actually be a pretty decent nation, you know, back in like the late, mid-90s, but completely fallen off in the year within this century, which is, of course, very, very unfortunate. But hey, what can you do? Pick up to now. There's any chance of you dropping points so that Scotland can make it to Germany? Nile, I Nile, what are we? Nile, you're literally at the top of the group. You got Nile, you guys are going through. I don't I don't even know why we're even discussing this. Like you guys, Scotland is going through. I don't know what we're talking about. Y'all want all of the games you can win. What? Come on. Right now, I think the only discussion there is to have is who's gonna get second. OK, that's what I'm thinking, even though I know Spain hasn't played, you know, they obviously have some games played less than the rest of us. But either way, I do think Scotland got this in the back. So I'm not even, you know, if I were you now, I wouldn't be concerned whatsoever. I'm more concerned um, in regards to Norway, because I, I do if I'm going to be very honest. I know I keep making these videos because the thing is, though, I do, you know, we have international break. I need to take a break from it. I don't want to be making my night call that every single time, especially when it comes to the men's side. And there's been so much like negativity. I just want to take a break. So I want to kind of take my energy over to Norway's national team, which probably will be disappointing me this week regardless. We probably might be slapped up by Spain on Sunday. Either way, it is what it is. I still am going to be honest. I do think that the ship probably has sailed for us to qualify at least through this qualification here. Maybe by nation sleep potential. But then again, whenever we say that, we always tend to mess it up. And there's been, trust me, there's been moments. I never forget when we were this close to getting by back in the 2016 Euro Cup. We were this close, okay? We just needed to beat Hungary, okay? The, and this is no disrespect, but the Hungarian goalkeeper, I remember how the pundits here in Norway say, yeah, we're going to we're gonna win. What? The Hungarian goalkeeper, the guy doesn't even wear shorts. He wears gray sweatpants while he's, you know, saving the, the, the goal, okay? In goal, the guy wears gray sweatpants. People were making fun of that. And I was saying, you know what? I think this might go back to bite us. This might this might haunt us afterwards. We might actually be jinxing ourselves, which was exactly the case, everybody. It literally was. We messed up. We weren't able to qualify. Since then, you see our, you know, lovely neighbors, Denmark, 
Sweden, even Finland go through. Norway? No. Even Iceland, for God's sake. No disrespect, by the way. They do well. Norway, however, don't. So don't get twisted. Just because we got some of the ballers here. We got Alain Brett Holland. You got Martin Erdegaard. Doesn't mean that this team is going to do that much. We, the thing, though, that makes me try to be a bit more hopeful is that it's not just about those two carrying the team. We do have some other players as well. But I do think our defense is 100% our weak point. 100%. You could see it at the uh, some of the other games as well uh, that were played in the other international breaks. It hasn't been ideal. So that's something that needs to be fixed. Okay? But for me, I want to see... I just want to see some football being played. So Antonio Nusa, this exciting young talent here, he... Might become a big, big baller when he grows up because this kid, he's special. Oscar Bob as well, also special talent. So there's definitely some talents here for the future. So I cannot wait. I'm excited. And uh, we have to wait and see how this all goes. Big up Noah. Hope you're doing well, brother. Hope you're doing well. But yeah, uh, in regards to the game, though, what am I thinking? How will we do? I mean, it's Cyprus. It's a way, though. But I do believe that we're going to win. I'm going to say, I want to say 3-0. But you never know. We might completely sleep and then suddenly end up saying 3-1. So that might be my prediction. No says, if you were a man manager, who would you sign from Norway? Players except Holland and Erdogan. Ooh! That is a wonderful question there, Noah. I'll probably Antonio Nusa, left wing. I I would be very yeah, I would be open to signing him actually. I really like him. And I also think I really like um Julian Ryusham, the fullback who plays for Borussia Dortmund. That also is a player that I do like. Um so those are the ones that really I mean, Oscar Bob is more so like, okay, I technically Antonio Nusa is actually two years younger than Oscar Bob, but still, I think we see maybe more from Antonio Nusa than Oscar Bob, uh, at least first team football, that probably would be picking um, Antonio Nusa and, like I said, um, Julian Riersson, those two in particular. Um, yeah, yeah, I think so. Sorry, I had a cough. But yeah, that's kind of with that. Um, trying to think, is there anything else to mention within tomorrow's game? Because this match preview doesn't need to be the longest. <laughs> it doesn't at all. Um, I just, I do think it's a game that we're going to win. I do expect us to win the game as well, if I may add so. So we have to wait and see. We have to wait and see. But yeah, like I said, I will be doing a live match reaction for this game tomorrow. Um, so make sure you tune in for that, of course. All right. Let me see if there's anybody that's live now so that because we're probably going to be wrapping this up so that we can redirect y'all. Everybody wants to, you know, pick up to those who have been subscribing, by the way. The more likes we get, the more we're able to push the likes out there for more people to see so you know it does help out you know it does I'm just gonna double check here is there anybody that's live now that i can redirect you to you know what i'll redirect you to to mo yeah so stay so just stay on this um this channel this this uh stream and tell footy judge mo who is who has his own channel? Those of you who aren't familiar, he's on Never a Foul as well. Uh, joint channel with uh, the other lads there. But yeah, once you redirect you to there, say that this is a Sophia's Football Talk raid or SFT raid. So I'll redirect you guys to there. Yeah, so we're gonna wrap it up. But yeah, guys, stay on here and go and say hi to Footy Josh Mo on his channel. All right.
Yeah, guys, see you guys very, very soon. I'll be back tomorrow for the match reaction. Like, share, subscribe. Once again, we are on the road to 3K subscribers. So let's get the likes up, shall we? And the subscribers up. And join the SFT membership as well if you haven't already. But yeah, we're going to end it. Tell them SFT rate. Raid the chat.